Hello, everybody. How are you doing today? My name is Johan Lazinski. I'm here with the one and only Charleston Hughes, and we are the Better With Age webcasts. How are you doing, Charleston? I'm all right. And that Better With Age has nothing to do with me, I don't think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How was uh how are you surviving? How are things going with you in your world? Uh everything's going pretty good right now. You know, you see my world behind me. <laughs> yeah. But you know, I'm surviving, going day by day, kind of taking this podcast and really trying to make the best of my situation, especially with my fans and really give them an outlet just to hear me and let me hear them and you know and get to know my buddy Johan let everybody else get to know you because I know people get tired of hearing me so why not do it in the comfort of my own home where I can really relax and express myself I don't from what I know I don't think anybody ever gets tired of hearing you from what I see on Twitter they want to know more and more and more about Charleston so I think that's one of the reasons why we decided after a few beverages one day didn't we decide hey why don't we do a show? Why don't we do something to be able to tell people about Saskatchewan? And this is uh, about Regina, about Saskatchewan, what you're doing, introduce them to some of the businesses, introduce them to some of the knowledge from, uh, from what I know about people here in Saskatchewan, from what you know, your experiences, what you've experienced here in Regina. And after a few more beverages, we said, all right, okay, let's do this. And <laughs> then we came up with the idea. We got uh, the name from Twitter. Did you get the name Better With H from your Twitter account? Or how'd you get that? Yeah, just like I said, I like to keep the fans, you know, interacted um, as much as possible while we're doing this. So we'll be bringing random fans on the show. I did get the name of this podcast from a fan. So, I mean, just that alone shows that, you know, anything's possible <laughs> <laughs> so with that we came up with the idea better with age podcast webcast show to be able to talk about uh, all things saskatchewan here we go so charleston what better way to start off with uh, with tell us something about you let's get into mr charleston hughes now that you're here in saskatchewan you've been here three years two years uh two years going on three Going on three, we're living in the crazy COVID time. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, how how you got here to Canada? What uh, you're playing ball in Div Two in uh, Michigan, right? You're a Michigan boy through and through. You like your Red Wings, your uh, your Michigan teams. Oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm not a Detroit Lions fan though. <laughs> no, although I, I got the, although I got this shirt on, it's not a Detroit Lions shirt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know the funny thing is, I know about three Detroit uh, Lions fans. That uh, one of my good buddies, Heno, he's a big, big, big Detroit Lions fans. And back in the day in Saskatchewan, here that's the only uh, cable TV that we got. Right, we would get all the Bernie Smilovitz and everybody. Oh, in Michigan, so we would be able to watch all the cable, and that's what we got. So there's a few Detroit Lions fans out there. But, um, yeah, so you came – so you are Div 2. Tell us about how you got here to Canada and, and your journey, as it's pretty pretty interesting. Um, yeah, I guess, I guess the main reason how I got into Canada is because I was very determined. I was pretty freaking persistent for the most part. <laughs> so um, – Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> but I ended up meeting a guy named John Murphy uh, when I was in college. And it seemed, like John, it seemed like John Murphy was like the guy if you wanted to play in a bowl game back when I was in college. So every, every bowl game, they kind of like push me towards him, contact him. He'll let you know if you can come to the game or not. So he was like the guy to let every player know that, hey, you can go play in this game, you can go play in this game, you can go play in this bowl game. So I didn't. I ended up not going to any bowl game, you know, my senior year. And because John Murphy was the guy that everybody needed to talk to, I like found all of his personal information. So I had like his cell phone number, like his house phone number, like his AIM address, his regular address. Like I, I knew everything about him. And I just, yeah, so I contacted him all the time, just reaching out to this guy, going like, man, when are you going to give me my opportunity? Then he never ended up giving me an opportunity. And then one day I was at a Arena One workout with uh, 
Grand Rapids Rampage. Holy cow. Yeah. And um, I was trying out for that team. And I had a great workout. Like, I was probably the best defensive player that was there, like, hands down. I knew it. Like, everybody else around me knew it. Could no offensive lineman block me. I was doing good on all linebacker drills and everything. But I was just small. So I was undersized compared to everybody else. Yeah. Um, so I ended up not – I ran a good time. I think I ran a 4.49 at that time. So I ran a yeah, fast right. 40. 4.49? Four, four, oh, yeah. I was blazing fast <laughs> when I came out my senior year. <laughs> but, yeah, I ended up, you know, running a good time and, and doing good. So I drew some eye attention. But it was also like, man, you're only like 240 soaking wet. <laughs> so I was like, oh, man. So nobody really gave me a shot at that time. And, you know, I packed my stuff up and I was leaving that place. And I ended up seeing, you know, I ended up walking past John Murphy talking to another guy, introducing himself, another D lineman that was there, like, hi, my name's John Murphy. And I overheard it and looked over my shoulder, like, hold up, it's that guy that I've been messaging all this time. And I've been emailing and calling his phone and just blowing him up, just stalking him for the most part. So I was like, Oh, I'm definitely waiting for this guy because he got to he got to see me face to face and we got to have a personal talk. So <laughs> like, there's no way I'm letting him out of my sight at this time. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna wait till he get done and then I'm gonna run over there and get all in his face again and press him <laughs> press him one more last time just to let him know and see me face to face. And I ran up on him, waited till he finished talking to that D lineman, and and I ran up on him and talked to him like, hey, John, you're John Murphy, right? And I could tell he was kind of like standoffish. He's bagging up at first. And, <laughs> you know, I kind of explained to him, like, man, you know, I'm Charleston Hughes. I'm the guy that's been blowing your phone up about giving me an opportunity to play football. I was like, you saw me perform today. I obviously was the best D lineman here. I was the best defensive player here. It's like, give me a chance. Yeah. It, and then he was like, how about this? I can invite you to a, a mini camp down in Florida uh, if you make it through that then they'll invite you to camp, but you got to make it through this rookie mini camp to go to a regular camp with Calgary. And, and so, so that was with Calgary. He was with the Stampeders at the time? Yeah, he was a scout for the Stampeders at that time. So not only was he like a, I guess, a regional guy who worked all of college football, but he was also a scout. With Calgary? Yeah, then I made it through rookie camp with Calgary. I didn't make it through regular camp, so I got cut in regular camp with Calgary. So I was cut my first year and then went home, had to evaluate football. So I was really going to just hang the cleats up and give it up. Like I had a lot of guys, I, I felt like I was one of the top defensive players there too, but with the CFL, it's more of like a numbers game yeah. when it comes to Canadians and Americans. We know that. So, we know that for sure. Uh, while I'm packing my stuff up, like sad, about to cry, you know, packing my stuff up <laughs> on the way out the door. You know, I had a couple guys that were like, man, you shouldn't be going home, but trust me, don't get too comfortable because you'll be back. But I was, you know, they say that to everybody, and yeah. I'm just like, ah, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, as I'm walking out the door and stuff, you know, I talked to a couple of the guys, and they said the same thing. The coaches said, just keep training, keep working out. Well, you never know what might happen. And I just figured it was all fluff just to make me feel better. <laughs> so I just kind of ignored it, walked out the door, went home, about to hang the cleats up, searching for a real job now so I can start start my life now yeah. that football's out the window because everybody knows while you're chasing a dream, the bills don't stop coming in. Yeah. So you, <laughs> yep. so you got to find a way to keep continue paying the bills. And I think, I think three, maybe four weeks later, after the first CFL game, it took four injuries for them to call me back. <laughs> it was this like, is, this is in what year? What year are we talking about? Here we're this, going two thousand eight. Two thousand eight. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Great, great cup run. That was the great cup run year. I ended up yeah. coming back to this team, so they invited me back. Maybe three games yeah. into the season in two thousand eight. And, from then on, it's never looking back. <laughs> <laughs> From then on, you've become a two-time Grey Cup champ. You're third right now in sacks uh, all-time in the CFL, correct? Uh, fifth, fifth. Fifth? fifth. 
Okay. Yeah. Fifth all time. Um, you're chasing, you're, you're there, right? And uh, now I guess that brings you all the way through to being here in Regina, Saskatchewan, having a, a few years. And uh, how do you feel about everything right now with COVID? I know that it's, okay, we're here in Regina, jump, you know, jump all the way to, to 2020, where we were supposed to host the great cup here in Regina big things were coming after last year right I mean after you guys you know hosted and unfortunately lost to Winnipeg um you know you, you how was your off season uh the off season been good I had surgery at the beginning of the off season back in December so like December 5th um once I got that surgery you know I started lifting weights you know they said I was going to be out for three months I think I was back probably fully fully healed up in less than a month almost yeah that's so, your per persistency there again mr yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah they said don't they said don't touch weights for a couple of days i started lifting like day two day two after surgery <laughs> go figure, go figure. Yeah. yeah but yeah i mean my off season has been pretty good you know 2020 has been kind of challenging to begin with anyways because it seems like it's been a constant thing constant you know situations that just keep popping up like for me it was like surgery then it was you know like some contract stuff that I was dealing with but now it's COVID stuff that's going on so now it's just it's just up in the air man now it's now as things progress um I guess the only happy side about that is Regina has no no uh active cases right now so yeah, you know, said, Regina's yeah. kind of clear um, with Ontario kind of opening up their sport industry. You know, it should be more of like a trickle down effect where everybody else starts to, you know, somewhat follow suit and move move past. We're hoping so. We're hoping so. The way that things are going, it's great that uh, everybody here in Saskatchewan, Regina, and, and uh, um, they're doing fantastic. That in Southern Saskatchewan, as of yesterday, zero COVID cases. So that's fantastic news for everybody but I mean it is with the CFL uh, it's one of those things and you've probably heard that on lots of sports talk radio and kind of the news is that for the CFL to be able to survive they've obviously asked the government for money and um, the federal government for money and, and asking of the 150 million dollars and lots of people are have their opinion as to why or why not to give but um, it's going to be an interesting time to be able to figure out how the other provinces adjust. Obviously, Saskatchewan, I think, and Manitoba are kind of leading the way in regards to low cases. But, you know, how's BC going to react? How's everybody in BC going to be able to do? How are how is everybody in Ontario going to be able to adjust? How are the, our players? Your quarterback, Cody Fajardo, is in the States. You know, when is he going to be allowed to be able to come back uh, over the borders? Is there gonna be a season what are your thoughts you think that uh you think you're gonna play this year or what are your thoughts on that um i hope so yeah <laughs> we all hope so <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah but yeah but long as you got hope that's halfway that's you're like a quarter of the way there so you got to keep hope alive until think... there's no more space for hope to, uh, <laughs> to be there there you go. There's your positive <laughs> outlook by Charleston Hughes. You know? <laughs> Always keep hope alive. Never give up on yourself. Never yeah. give up on your thoughts. Can you do Hallmark cards after this? Or maybe we get uh, some. Kind of I need to. That's coming. That's Grand Ma <laughs> That's Grandmaster Hughes talking. That's yeah. not me. That's not me anymore. <laughs> That'll kind of lead me <laughs> to my next question is is from the one of the things I've seen uh, of your social media, you've developed some some pretty interesting talents over the uh, off season here and over this this COVID period, you've developed your own, I think, cooking with Charleston on Twitter or is now you're like a master chef or can you tell us a little <laughs> bit more about that? What the I, hell? I, I think the thing is, is that, you know, a lot of people look at this COVID thing and being stuck at home as a, as a sad moment. And, you know, people are getting kind of stir crazy about it and, you know, getting claustrophobic and having, What's that syndrome called when you're stuck at home too much? Um, when you're when you're just locked in, like married? No, no, no <laughs> well, that's that too. But <laughs> going to kill me on that one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, no, but no, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I, I think it's more 
more or less the simple fact that once once you're locked down like that and it's kind of different from what you're used to and you're used to being out and being able to do whatever you want so now when there's something that's holding you inside you got to find an innovative way to keep your mind off of you know being locked up and, and being with your family so much and being with yeah. your loved ones or definitely or, or just being held down too long so you got to find innovative ways to keep yourself entertained to you know brainstorm to keep your thoughts running so i took up cooking and <laughs> you know i've always been a good cook to begin with in the first place but now i kind of made an emphasis on okay maybe i i'll try to cook some stuff that i normally don't cook now like you, everybody thinks bacon is hard i think bacon is extremely easy it's kind of more easier than cooking at this point i think because you always have your base ingredients right you always start with the same thing and then you branch off from there so you always start in one bowl you start with eggs sugar milk and butter and then whatever else you put in it and in another bowl you start with flour baking baking powder and salt and then from there you branch off into whatever you're making after that but right. everything bacon starts with those two bowls and i'm thinking like that's it's easy <laughs> <laughs> i've had some of your uh, recent baking of late is that you had uh, for cinco de mayo you had a nice tres leches uh cake that was you posted on your your twitter account um fantastic by the way my my wife and myself we loved it so thank you very much for that but you're not only doing that you did you know you're doing cornbread you're doing um taco you did a great mexican meal you're you're really going you know you're not stopping at anything you're making everything that you can think of yeah i've i've, I've I watch a lot of cool cooking food channels too. So that got a lot to do with it. So I watch like a food channel uh, when I'm cooking on there and then I instantly get inspired to good make something. Yeah, good. I mean, that's fantastic. So we can follow you on your, not only on this webcast for your latest uh, cooking uh, conquests, but we can... Uh, Maybe we can get Gordon Ramsay on yeah, here. Yeah. Okay, there you go. With your persistence, I think that's going to happen. I'm yeah. going gonna, gonna to one day get Gordon Ramsay on this podcast. Good. I'm going to make you a believer. Good. All right. Please do, please do prove it to me. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. So, and some of the other things I saw that you did this off season is one of the more hilarious things I've seen in a while. And uh, fortunately for me, I was able to be your cameraman, but you also took up ice hockey for the first time at a great charity event in rural Saskatchewan in Imperial Saskatchewan. Tell me about your hockey exploits for the first time being on skates with a stick. And how that Ooh, went? That was that was actually pretty weird. I mean, <laughs> playing playing hockey like that not only was it weird because I was like my first time playing hockey on the ice, but it was weird because I was in Imperial Saskatchewan, <laughs> and that's that's a different kind of city right there. Because I met I actually Down. know I actually yeah. know one guy who was from Imperial Saskatchewan. I didn't know it, and it was a a, a server that works at Victoria's Tavern. Yeah, one one of my watering holes. Yeah, one but of at, one of the many. <laughs> yeah. But at but at Victoria's Tavern, there's a server there, and her boyfriend is from Imperial Saskatchewan. And okay. me not knowing this, he was at Imperial Saskatchewan at the event at the <laughs> hockey tournament. And when I got there, you know, I ended up seeing him. Was like, hey, what's going on, man? And little did I know, everybody in town was his cousin. <laughs> so I, I was kind of weird Saskatchewan <laughs> yeah I was kind of I was kind of weirded out by that and I've I've been to many small towns like that in Saskatchewan but that was the first time where I knew somebody that was there and they were like yeah man everybody here is my cousin I uh, remember that <laughs> <laughs> welcome to Saskatchewan like I said so you had a nice little uh, uh I think we had there was about what 200 people came out for uh, the imperial it was a fundraiser for the rink and you were uh, one of the surprise celebrity contestants to be able to put on the skates and, and go out there. And how'd you do? I can say this. I'm not going to say hockey's an easy sport. <laughs> but I can say for my first debut on ice as a hockey player, I hit the post once. Yeah. 
I missed once and I scored on my third shot. So if I can score a goal in my first three shots ever on ice, give me six months of training and I can be just as good as Ryan Reeves. Oh, 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 wow. Jordan Reeves is going to say a few things about that, I'm sure. (laughs) (laughs) Definitely. Definitely. I'll be good. I'll be just as good as Ryan Reeves. Think about this. Think about if you give LeBron James six months of hockey training, how good will he be? Yeah. Okay. Now you've been watching too much of the Save the Last Dance and MJ and (laughs) baseball skills and be able to do that. I've had the same talk with with Jordan Eberle, and I told Jordan Eberle, if we both switch sports right now, yeah, I would be able to play hockey way faster than he'd be able to play football. <laughs> well, first off, Everly, yeah, he's 120 pounds soaking wet. So I don't know if he's going to be he's, those... he's the same size as Swerve. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. No, Everly's obviously one of the most talented players. Uh, in the league well one of them anyway in the nhl but yeah i don't know so six months eh? so you now you know maybe what you're going to be doing after football maybe we'll go into that six months training we'll get a few guys here that we know training up here in regina and away you go see what you can put on the blades and and have a second career so that'll be interesting you don't believe me watch this (laughs) yeah no no trust me wait brett Just wait for it. Just All right. wait for it. If anybody knows, uh, I think your persins- persistency, it's me. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. No, it'll be, no, it'll be good. Uh, it'll definitely, it'll definitely be good. So, enough about me. <laughs> Everybody knows most of this stuff about me. Let's figure out who the heck is Johan. <laughs> Les Lozinski? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's first Hold on, here you go. Right Brett, now. Brett, slide in here for a second. See? I got a special guest, everybody. All right. Hey Brett, how are you doing? Six months of training. Will I be Man, able to play no hockey? No chance. I heard this. <laughs> <laughs> you can get all your buddies go six months and I'll go six on one. You won't even be close to Reeves right now. <laughs> the truth okay, get out. him the truth get him out of the show. I don't, I don't like him already. <laughs> what do the kickers know come on yeah but he he was actually a triple a hockey player before he was a football player so oh really yeah oh i've seen seen him skate before and he's actually pretty pretty damn good (laughs) 297 points in 41 games is a line right there there you go that was brett's Brett's you have it, yeah. Two hundred and ninety-seven points in forty-one games. Holy oh, jeez, he's lighting yeah, it up as a as a three-person line. That's 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 a pretty decent line. Where are the rest of his teammates playing now? See, he's a gamer. That's what you call <laughs> prime time athlete, right there. Yeah. So not only don't don't just think him as of a kicker and think the kickers are unathletic because he's a prime time hockey player too. Oh. I know it. Hey, you should see the kid dance. (laughs) (laughs) We'll have to definitely see that on uh, one of the future shows is Brett out dancing in Regina. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) No, but back back to what you were saying. Who is Johan Lozinski? Lozinski. Well, um, I'm a Saskatoon boy. I'm a Saskatoon boy. I I grew up in Saskatoon. I uh, went to elementary, high school, university there. University was fun at U of S. That's where I got to meet a lot of the guys you see back uh, behind me. Some of the boys, Scott Flurry, Graham Bell. A lot of the guys are all U of S. So I'm very proud of the U of S alumni and uh, the fun times had there. Uh, when I was at U of S, I started to do some work with a brewery. Uh, just teaming up with them. I was playing rugby and then I was always thinking about uh you know the booze industry as i worked uh, probably about four or five different jobs in the booze industry as uh as a server as a door guy uh, all kinds of stuff uh at the local bars go figure in uh while i was going to university paying the bills oh, you was about you was a bouncer yeah god yeah oh, oh man that's all can we get your <laughs> yeah. uh, physical attributes <laughs> yeah <laughs> i was strong back in the day but <laughs> oh. <laughs> 
physical attributes. I'm going to bounce your ass out of here right away here. <laughs> no, but um, yeah, no, I was, uh, you know, working in the industry and then I got to know um, some people over at Great Western Brewing Company and, and my, uh, my summers there, I'd, I'd spend uh, with Great Western just uh, pushing some beer and always doing that while I worked in Waska Sioux, which reminds me, have you been to Waska Sioux, Charleston? Don't even know where it is on the map. Oh man, it's up in uh, northern Saskatchewan, about uh, an hour past uh, Prince Albert. We got to go there this summer. Obviously, if your summers aren't uh, going to be uh, playing too much football this year, you got to go up to Waska Sioux. Beautiful, beautiful. They call it similar to like a Banff in Alberta. And oh wow! Yeah, it's just beautiful. That just nice little small, small little village and uh, beautiful lake right there. The water, but. I was working in Waska Sioux and also uh, kind of just like a, a sampling guy for Great Western. And I got into the, the booze industry. So I, I got a job with Great Western Brewing Company. Uh, I spent one year in Saskatoon after university. And then I got the offer to move to Regina, Saskatchewan. And you don't get that offer too much when you're in Saskatoon to move to Regina because it's kind of like Calgary and Edmonton. They don't like each other, right? So yeah. you don't... You don't <laughs> Go there, but I got uh, moved here for work, and I've been here in Regina ever since in the liquor industry, and I've worked for some fantastic companies, and and now um, uh, still in the industry and still pushing lots of booze, as you know, as I quite frequently uh, like to be able to drop off some samples for people like you and Nick Lewis and and a lot of my friends. So I'm I'm in the liquor industry now, and um, been very proud to be able to be in this industry for the past. 20 years so uh pushing any kind of uh spirit beer wine and spirits i got some great companies i represent uh great products i represent so um, we'll be talking about that later on so i'm very happy to team up and i've been in the booze industry and, and working like i said with different great bars and restaurants all throughout saskatchewan so the fans want to know and the people want to know how do they get how, their free stuff not exactly okay how did we meet <laughs> how do you even know Charleston? That's that feels well, weird talking about myself in third person. How do you, yeah. how do you know Charleston? <laughs> I think it came up when um, uh, a good friend of mine and a good friend of yours, uh, a mutual acquaintance, Larry Mueller, the great, the one and only Larry Mueller over at Extreme Auto Body at Fairfield Hotel. He's a Regina uh, legend, by the way. Yeah, yeah, he is. <laughs> <laughs> I think I can still hear him talking wherever he is. He's still talking right now. The guys. <laughs> but uh, Larry Mueller knows everybody. I've known Larry for, for many years here in Regina. And uh, I think one of the times I got a text message from him saying, hey, Owen, this is Mueller. Mueller here. Because he always talks about himself in the third person. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which is really weird to me. But he's like, Mueller here. I say, hey, hey Larry. Uh, he goes, um, uh, I got a friend, Charleston Hughes, wants to come by and uh, can uh, – can you take him for a tour of a distillery? And I said, yeah, for sure. And uh, then you came out to the distillery and you brought some of your teammates. I think uh, Jordan Reeves is out, Chad Jeter. You had uh, Jefferson. Uh, you had your whole D-line crew, right? I think it was Jeter's birthday or whose birthday? Yeah, yeah, it was, it was Chad Jeter's birthday. But yeah. I, had, I brought the entire defensive line to uh, Last Mountain Distillery, yeah. which is a great place to actually go view if you hadn't viewed it yet. Yeah, should go check that out. Fantastic uh, distillery just outside of Regina, and so um, um, that's that's when I first started to get to know you, and then I'd bump into you about every third day at uh, all the other bars and rest. No, I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a I'm a foodie. What can I say? <laughs> yeah, no kidding. So uh, so then I I'm not a foodie. I'm a boozy. So then uh, I. Uh, I, I got to know you that way. And so we kept in contact and we've been in contact over the last few years and we just said, Hey, um, you know, we've been in, having a few, like I said, we like the soda pops. We like to have a few beverages and to be able to do that. And we came up with a great idea about, geez, we got some time on our hands now. Um, COVID's here. You know, what are you doing? And we're both big fans and followers of different podcasts, webcasts. And we said, you know, well, why don't we see if we can, tie that in, tie in a little bit of Saskatchewan knowledge with me, tie in a little bit of Charleston knowledge, your fan base and sports, bring the sports aspect and bring the food aspect, the booze aspect, the Saskatchewan aspect, 
tie it all together and come up and we came up with the better with age podcast so uh i think that uh, that tells us how we met a little bit about myself about who the hell is johan everybody <laughs> knows who the hell uh charleston hughes is and then uh charleston who do we have uh coming on for our first guest uh we got nick lewis coming on you know i'm gonna try to keep this podcast as entertaining as possible well we're we gonna try to keep this podcast as entertaining as possible uh we'll have a lot of amazing people to bring on we'll have a lot of different people to bring on from local people all around regina uh all the way to nhl to cfl to nfl to i'm gonna try to get as many different groups from professional sports on as possible all the way down to uh soccer coaches head coaches for soccer teams i'm gonna have it all lined up have it all straightened away but the one person that i'm guaranteed i'm gonna have on if not jordan ramsey is somebody very close to him all right well, that's good to know and i'm gonna tie that in with um the local I said jordan i said jordan ramsey gordon yeah. ramsey yeah. sorry about that yeah. <laughs> i'm sure he's watching right now so he'll be messaging you later saying well oh. you butchered my name yeah. Oh, you know him. He MFing people in the kitchen, so I can only imagine in person. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, and then uh, I'm going to tie in a few of the the local uh, businesses and uh, businesses from here in Saskatchewan. I want to be able to reach out to men and women here that are, you know, possibly in the military, people that are firemen, uh, police, people that are first responders, just people in in the industry, in the beer industry, in the spirits industry. We're going to try and be able to mix a little bit of the sports with uh, Saskatchewan people. The entertainment industry, we've got a great guest coming on for the second uh, show. Uh, fans of a band, well, maybe we won't say that yet. We'll, we'll, we'll say that later on, but we're fantastic. Save it, just save it, keep yeah, it. Yeah, one it of my big fans. Yeah, <laughs> he's gonna be joining us for our second show. We're gonna have fantastic breweries, people from all over, so. He was actually excited. supposed to perform at Juno's this year before it got canceled. You were supposed to be there. You were and trying I to. I was supposed it. to be there. I was trying to host it. I was trying <laughs> to go on stage and kind of <laughs> and coming to the stage next. Justin <laughs> <laughs> So now we got our own our own platform to be able to host and and uh, provide entertainment that way. So we're going to be coming to people on YouTube, on our social medias, the Better with Age show on via twitter instagram facebook our own personal facebook pages so you'll start to be able to see a lot of us a lot more right all right and last but not least there's a, there are many things that get better with age whether it's cheese blue jeans leather boots there's a lot of different things that get better at age so not only just myself but the most important of them all are friendships and I'm glad to have Johan as a friend, and I'm glad to have all the future guests on this show as friends. So thank you for listening. There you go. There's your uh, moment with Charleston. Here you go. Grand, <laughs> Grandmaster Hughes. <laughs> Grandmaster. That's the only time I get philosophical right oh, there. Oh, Lord. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I guess we're going to uh, pass it on. We're going to go talk to Nick Lewis, and we're going to try <laughs> to entertain our, everybody in the near future. All right. Thanks, Charleston. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks.